What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update today, 2021, as well as the next two upcoming packages, the physical infrastructure package and the next stimulus package, as well as what is going on in the world today. I also want to talk about the Social Security increase or the Social Security raise, as well as the Social Security decrease that some people are getting letters about. Yesterday, we had talked about how some people, I've literally seen dozens of comments of, of people saying that they had gotten a letter from the Social Security Administration, or at least what they thought was, uh, regarding a Social Security decrease, saying that their benefits were going to be decreased by like $100 per month or $50 per month or um, something like that. Okay, so um, first of all, I didn't get a copy of one of these letters. One person sent me a copy of a Social Security letter, but it wasn't it wasn't a decrease letter. Okay, so um, let's go over this. Let's talk about this. A lot of people are very concerned about this. There has been enough people in the comments that said they have gotten a letter from Social Security that said they were going to get a decrease in their benefits. Um, enough for me to believe them because, again, if I just saw maybe one or two comments, I'd say, ah, well, you never know, maybe not. But there were literally probably over 100 comments of people saying, yes, they did, or their brother did, or their mom did. They got a letter from Social Security saying their benefits were going to be decreased. So let's talk about this because um, I definitely don't think this is for everybody. It's not like there's a Social Security decrease going across the board. So let's go over the likely scenarios where this uh, decrease falls into. So number one, there's a very real possibility that some of these letters could be a scam. Okay, Social Security scams, uh, IRS tax scams, stimulus check scams, student loan forgiveness scams are rampant right now. In fact, on this channel, along with almost every popular YouTube channel about <laughs> on YouTube, there are scams going on almost every single day. It's, it's very sad that YouTube has not fixed this problem yet. Just being a programmer and being an internet entrepreneur for many, many years, I, I can think of a dozen different ways that they could fix this problem or partially fix this problem. And this has been going on for months. So if you ever see my face in the comments saying, it's Jimmy and asking you to contact me on WhatsApp with all sorts of crazy characters and you can barely even read it, uh, just know it's a scam. It's not me. It's somebody who just creates a new account, names themselves It's Jimmy, uses my picture, and then says, contact me for an investment where they're trying to scam you. That's a scam. Just disregard it. Just don't even worry about it. I delete them every single day, uh, but they make new accounts every single day. So it's a constant battle. Me and my wife actually spend hours every day uh, banning them and deleting their comments. So yeah, there's a lot of work we do on this channel behind the scenes that you probably don't know about. But there's a very good likelihood that this letter about a social security decrease is a scam. So the, probably the easiest way to figure this out is if they ask you to contact them, uh, Google the phone number and see if it's actually a social security number, okay? Um, also, if you're even skeptical about it at all, uh, don't call the phone number on the paper, just Google the social security number, uh, call your local social security office or the main office and then ask them about it. I have seen several comments from people down below in our community. Our community is absolutely amazing. When it comes to solving a problem, we're, we're on it. We're like family, we're like, uh, we're like this, right? We're like two best friends just helping each other out, right? So um, I've seen multiple comments from people that said they actually called the Social Security and Social Security knew nothing about this. So the number one most likely reason is that this is a scam. However, however, there are certain circumstances where your Social Security could actually be decreased and they could actually take money out of your Social Security check. Here are a couple of the reasons why this could happen. Okay, number one, this is directly from SSA.gov, the Social Security uh, Administration. Can Social Security benefits be garnished for alimony, child support, restitution, or delinquent taxes? We can withhold Social Security. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. We can withhold Social Security benefits to enforce your legal obligations to pay child support, alimony, or restitution. State laws determine a valid garnishment order. 
order. By law, we garnish current and continuing monthly benefits. We do not make retroactive adjustments. You cannot appeal to Social Security for implementing garnishment orders. If you disagree with the garnishment, contact an attorney or representative where the court issue is ordered. Again, this is directly from the Social Security website, faq.ssa.gov. Delinquent taxes. The Department of the Treasury can withhold Social Security benefits to collect overdue federal tax debts. It can include a notice of levy to collect overdue federal taxes under Section 6334C of the Internal Revenue Code or the Federal Payment Levy Program to collect overdue federal taxes. This allows the Department of Treasury to withhold up to 15% of your monthly Social Security benefits until you repay the debt. Okay, You cannot appeal the reduction of a Social Security benefit payment under the tax levy to Social Security. Contact the Internal Revenue Service at 1-800-829-7650 to discuss any appeals. Non uh, Delinquent non-tax debt. The Department of Treasury can withhold Social Security benefits to collect delinquent non-tax debts owed to other federal agencies under the Debt Collection Improvement Act. The Department of Treasury controls this activity and will contact you if you owe a non-tax debt. We have no control over the reduction of Social Security benefits, and there is no appeal available under the Social Security Act. If you have questions in this situation, contact the Treasury staff at 1-800-304-3107. Okay, next up, the next reason why your Social Security could be decreased, or you could get a letter of this, is for Medicare Part B. If your decrease equals $148, it's probably for Medicare Part B. As you can see here, can Medicare Part B be taken out of your Social Security check? Yes. In fact, if you're signed up for both Social Security and Medicare Part B, the portion of Medicare that provides standard health insurance, the Social Security Administration will automatically deduct the premium from your monthly benefit. Again, the Social Security Administration will automatically deduct the premium from your monthly Social Security benefit. And as we can see here on Medicare.gov, the official government website for Medicare, the Medicare cost for Part B is $148.50. Last year, it was $144. This year, it is $148.50. And uh, yeah, so if your premium is reduced or your benefits are reduced by $148.50, now you know why. So uh, I will keep you up to date on this. If you have this letter, feel free to email me. My email is amzchamps, C-H-A-M-P-S, university at gmail.com. That's my course for how I teach people to sell products on Amazon. Please don't email me if you have just regular questions or anything like that. I, I don't have a staff to be able to answer hundreds of emails. Uh, it's just me and my wife here, and uh, it's enough for us to make three videos a day and just keep up with all the scammers because I, I really don't want people in my community to be scammed. So we literally check comments like every 10, 20 minutes. Then we ban the scammers, and then we have to go back and delete hundreds of them. I wish YouTube just had a delete all their old comments when you ban them from the channel option, which, like Facebook has, it would be much simpler and would save us probably an hour of work every day. But um, I'm here for you guys. I don't want you to be scammed. So it's work that we're willing to do. But I don't have the capacity to be able to an answer hundreds of emails. So please only email me if you have this Social Security letter or if you have an, an important development regarding a stimulus or if you have a state stimulus check. Uh, county stimulus program that's coming out right now, please uh, email me because I will keep you up to date. There's all these different state stimulus checks, county stimulus checks, and uh, programs coming available on for states and cities and counties like mortgage assistance, rental assistance, property tax assistance, utility assistance, as well as uh, stimulus checks coming from states. We've had multiple states already announce them, like California, like uh, New Jersey, uh, North Carolina. I'm trying to remember them all off the top of my head. We're not going to go over the details of that in this video. I'll link you to the most recent video I did about all the state stimulus checks here at the end of this video. Um, but please give me your comments down below about Social Security decreases, Social Security increases. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments.
Also, at the end of this video, I'll link you to my most recent video about Social Security increases that President Biden wants to do. Um, but for the rest of this video, I want to get to a fourth stimulus check update so we can uh, get to the latest information about that. Democratic Representative Pramila Jayapal, who is largely becoming the most um, powerful Democrat in the House of Representatives, as Nancy Pelosi is nowhere to be seen. She's barely talking about infrastructure, barely talking about the next stimulus package. She's uh, MIA, barely talking. I mean, we'll see some things come up about her here and there, but I mean, largely it's uh, Pramila Jayapal from the House of Representatives, Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders from the Senate, as well as Elizabeth Warren and President Biden and White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Okay. Um, very little coming from Republicans regarding stimulus. As remember, not a single Republican from the uh, for the third stimulus check package voted yes on the package. So it's about a 99% chance that Democrats are going to pass the next stimulus package completely on their own through the reconciliation process. Okay. So um, Nancy Pelosi's MIA. I don't know if she's having a health issue, uh, if she's sick or on vacation or what, but... Um, you know, the House of Representatives is there. Uh, it's just Nancy Pelosi has not been giving uh, her, her normal, like, everyday speeches or information, and she's just kind of MIA, missing in action. However, Pramila Jayapal, who is the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, and as I said, largely becoming one of the most influential Democrats in the House, or the most powerful, I should say. In fact, she's the co-author of this bill right here, along with Democratic Representative uh, Rashida Tlaib, that have introduced a bill for monthly recurring payments in the U.S. House of Representatives. As you can see here, this bill is for a one-time $2,000 stimulus check, then followed by $1,000 monthly recurring payments that would go until one year after the end of the pandemic or the end of the crisis. Well, Representative Jayapal uh, says today, the chairwoman of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, says bipartisan infrastructure talks are proving to be a waste of time and urged Democratic leaders to move forward with the reconciliation bill that doesn't need Republican votes to pass. She says, quote, in case it wasn't clear already, it certainly is now. Republicans are not going to do what needs to be done for working families. It would be foolish to think that Republican senators will suddenly go against uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell goal of uh, dedicating 100% of his ed energy towards blocking President Biden's, uh, Biden's agenda, which um, we have had Mitch McConnell actually come out and say that. Uh, that is an actual statement that uh, Mitch McConnell said. Jayapal urged the Senate and the House to immediately begin working on the budget resolutions to pass the American Jobs, which is the infrastructure package, and the American Families Plan through reconciliation so we can deliver on our promises. She issued her statement shortly after President Biden suspended his weeks-long negotiation with Republican Senator Negotiator Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia. She's the other Republican, she's the Republican Senator from West Virginia. The other Senator from West Virginia is Democratic Senator um, Joe Manchin on a bipartisan infrastructure package that would cost uh, less than President Biden's $2.2 trillion infrastructure package. Now a group of Democrats and Republican moderates in the Senate are trying to step in and craft their own bipartisan deal, which would be in the ballpark of $880 billion, significantly less than President Biden wants. And yesterday, the Problem Solvers Caucus appears and uh, proposed a $762 billion infrastructure package. But Jayapal says Congress needs to pass a far larger package, package than what the moderates are discussing. Republican Senator Mitt Romney told reporters that any bipartisan deal would not raise any taxes and instead rely on increasing user fees, such as a gas tax on gasoline and other strategies to raise revenue. Now, generally, Democrats are against user fees and Republicans are against raising taxes on the wealthy, the 1% or the corporations. So um, 
So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Senator Bernie Sanders says yesterday in a very important video where it was literally breaking news, amazing, crazy, shocking news. The Senator Bernie Sanders says that they are behind the scenes now working on the budget reconciliation process to combine the two bills, the infrastructure package and the next stimulus package, the American Families Plan, uh, together and pass them as one with the reconciliation process. That is exactly how they passed the third stimulus check package and uh, how they can do the next package as well, as long as they get all of the Democratic votes. The one key figure here is Democratic Representative Joe Manchin, a Republican, or I'm sorry, Democratic Senator. Some people might say he's a, he's a Republican Senator, but he's actually a Democratic Senator. Uh, some people call him a dino on this channel, a Democrat in name only. But 99% of the time, he does vote with the Democrats, just like Mitt Romney, who people call a rhino, a Republican in name only. 99% uh, of the time, he does vote with the Republicans. Now, we just had a bill passed earlier last night on um, a $250 billion bill for the United States to become a more competitive with China with chip production and semiconductor production because the world relies on uh, computer chips right now and there's a global shortage. It's affecting uh, cards. It's affecting electronics. It's affecting uh, Playstations and Xboxes. It's affecting TVs. Uh, there's a global shortage on multiple different things. Uh, millions of different items because there's no computer chips to go around. There's not enough. And um, the pandemic has kind of made the supply chain worse. So the good news is, is that passed the Senate with bipartisan uh, support, okay? So we had Republicans and Democrats vote yes on it. It now goes to the House to be voted on. Uh, that particular bill started in the Senate. The bills do not always have to start in the House. That's a common misconception that a lot of people have. Bills can be passed in the Senate first, then sent back to the sent over to the House and vice versa. Okay, but the good news about this is is that Senator Joe Manchin is seeing that it's not just the Democrats trying to ram bills down the Republicans' throat. And the good news is is they just passed the bill to, uh, today or last night in the Senate for this um, major manufacturing bill, we'll call it, for the United States to bring jobs to America, keep up our competitiveness with China, all sorts of good things in there for the um, continuation of manufacturing and to be able to not be at China's will when it comes to computer chips because uh, without computer chips, we can't produce a single car, not even a single, just cars alone, like just as one example. Uh, we cannot produce a single car without many computer chips. So uh, it can't be done. So um, if we have to rely on company or countries like China, uh, we're kind of at their mercy. And imagine if uh, they said, well, we're not going to send you anymore. Uh, we don't like what you're doing for, you know, what, what the investigation in COVID. What if they said, hmm, you know, we don't like that you're investigating us for the COVID origin origins. We're going to stop uh, all trade to you. OK, uh, well, we would not be in a very good position there because we do not produce uh, like we produce probably just a few percentage of the amount of chips, computer chips that our country needs. So uh, this is a good initiative. We need to be more self-reliant so that if that ever happened, the U.S. could produce and manufacture everything that we need, not just cars, but we're talking about everything here. And the more that's produced in the U.S., the more jobs that are in the U.S., right? Made in America. So that's a good initiative. But it also shows that Senator Joe Manchin, that the Democrats are trying to work with the Republicans. But for those rare bills, those one or two reconciliation packages, that they might need to go it alone, just like the third stimulus check package. And this is good because Senator Joe Manchin just seen a major bill passed in the Senate with Republican and Democratic support. So he won't be able to really say the Democrats aren't working with the Republicans. They've been negotiating over the infrastructure package for weeks now, and just some things they're not going to be able to negotiate on. So that is when they will use the reconciliation card. And that is what the Democrats are saying they're now working on to um, combine this bill into one and try to pass it through reconciliation. Now, Senator Joe Manchin, he's not, he doesn't really like this, um, but he didn't really like the last one either. And he did end up voting with them ultimately anyways for the third stimulus check package. And he'll likely do so with the fourth stimulus check package. He might need his arm twisted a little bit. Uh, he might need his palm greased a little bit, uh, whatever it takes at the end of the day. But remember, they need every single Democrat in the Senate to vote yes on it. 
and they need 99 percent, 99, yeah, 99 percent of Democrats in the House to vote yes on it. And that's exactly what happened with the third stimulus check package. Now, remember, there's about 15 different items they're negotiating on right now, like that bill for the monthly recurring stimulus checks. Uh, I think best case scenario, we'll see a monthly recurring stimulus check in the next package. Worst case scenario, we'll see a single stimulus check in the next package. I personally think that there is going to be at least a single stimulus check around. Um, you always get the naysayers to say, there will never be another stimulus check. People said that for months on my channel about the second stimulus check. There will never be a second stimulus check. And then there was. And then people said there will never be a third stimulus check. And then there was. And now there's people say there will never be a fourth stimulus check. And I personally really do think there will be. Now, in addition to this, in addition to the fourth stimulus check, there, the Democrats have already passed monthly stimulus checks in the form of the child tax credits. That is a bill that was passed from the third stimulus check package. That's why I call it a stimulus provision, uh, because it was passed in the third stimulus check package. And it sends out monthly checks to children, uh, 6 through 17, $250 per month starting on July 15th, and $300 per month for children under the age of six. Now, this child tax credit has been around for a while. In fact, as you can see here, the child tax credit was originally started in 1998. It started off at $400 per child, but back then that was, you know, probably worth about double what it is now just because of inflation over 25 years. Then it was increased to $500. Then it was increased to $600. Then it was increased to $1,000 back in 2010. And then in 2017, former President Trump, a Republican, increased it as well from $1,000 to $2,000. Then now the Democrats have increased it in the third stimulus check package to $3,000 for children ages 6 through 17 and $3,600 for children under the age of 6. So if you have grown children, if they were still children by 1998, you also got child tax credits all throughout those years, so of course, until they turned 18. I also want to note, as you can see here, that there is a $500 child tax credit as well for children aged 18. Uh, so again, the monthly, the 3,000 is for children 6 through 17. If your child is 18, they're kind of an adult then, or if they're a full-time college student ages 19 through 24, you will get a non-refundable credit of up to $500 each, okay? So a one-time payment of $500. Now, we're not sure if the IRS is going to pay that out in advance or if they're going to pay it uh, on uh, in July 15th or somewhere close to then or if it's going to be on your tax return. Uh, but monthly stimulus checks are already passed from the Democrats, at least for these child tax credits. They're also pushing to do it as a monthly stimulus check for everybody in the fourth stimulus check. Best case scenario, we see that. Worst case scenario, I think we see a fourth stimulus check, a single stimulus check, probably $1,400 or maybe $2,000, uh, including the Medicare expansion they want to do, the two years of free college, two years of free preschool, student loan debt forgiveness, other types of debt forgiveness. All these things could be in this next package or the next package after that. And they ha the Democrats have about a year to pass all these different things on their agenda, either in these next couple packages or one by one until the next election. When the next election comes up, if the Democrats lose the, even a single seat in the Senate, they will no longer have control. And they know this. They know they need to pass as much as they can in these next two packages as well as within the next year before the next election comes up. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I will keep you up to date with everything, all these different stimulus packages and stimulus provisions. Remember, new videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this video here to see all the state stimulus checks, county stimulus checks, and other stimulus programs that are available right now. And you can see this video on my most recent video on Social Security increases that President Biden wants to do. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.